Sister Zeno, we turn it over to you. Thank you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, for the morning. Hallelujah, Jesus. So thank you, Lord. I do want to uh, say to you, Sister Wilkes, that while we were praying and I, you know, trying to find uh, something from the Lord and in, in the situation that you're you're talking about, that we were praying for. Yes. And um, I saw this cement barrier wall and while and we were praying for this situation that you had asked us to and i saw us chipping away at that wall mm. so i know that we are we were making efforts in that direction mm -hmm. to bring um to bring down you know this barrier that's it, it's in a, it's a hindrance yeah. it's in the, it's in your way what i'm trying to say yeah and what is very uh yesterday uh, I always listen to my the radio station that is uh, that talks that has a lot of Bible study, you know, yeah. and that that uh, talk about the Word and and uh, bring messages. And so I'm always listening to that station. Yeah. And the message yesterday, uh, and I'm trying to find the name of it, but um, he he brought out so a lot of things about why the Lord allows things to come up in our in our way. We call them needs. We say, I have a need today, and this is what I want you to pray for. And so uh, he brings needs to us. Yeah. And uh, I, I want to find the name of it. If I find it, I will send it to you, Sister Wilkes, so, because you can you can tap into the streaming of that message. Okay. And uh, it would be very uplifting if you was to hear him talk about it. But he, he brought in some issues of, of, of the Old Testament where there were uh, obstacles yes. in the way, like Moses had the had Pharaoh after him, and they were by the sea, and so that was a barrier. Yeah. And then uh, he brought other other different situations in, in which uh, the people of God, or the man of God, or the woman of God, had these barriers that were hindering the, you know, their whatever it was that they they uh, they were at a, they were in a situation in which they couldn't do anything for or about it and they had exhausted every uh, way in which to accomplish whatever it was and and this was what he said he said why why is god you know why is this and and one of the things i wrote down and I, i'm i'm being very crazy in this book that i got i got a little tiny book and i keep in my purse so whenever I want, whenever I feel it, I need to write something down, I write it down. But the only thing is I don't have it in fixation. I just find areas and write things down. So I'm, yes. I'm trying to find my stuff. <clears throat> but um, the last, uh, at least the last three weeks, everything I've been listening to is about miracles. And it's mm. about, uh, you know, and it's about uh, believing God. And uh, one of the things that I did write down that I did find is that God is checking on me. And so he He allows things to come our way so that our real faith will begin to step out of us. Now, yes. The pressure is on. And so now what uh, what are what are you going to do when you're when the pressure's on? Because before the pressure is on you have all this information and you yeah, yeah, have yeah. agreement with everything. But now yeah. see how you do in it. Let's work uh -huh. this out in a real crisis for you. Oh so, <laughs> this God is checking on me. And this is what he said, that God is checking on you. And he says, Faith, he's checking on your faith, mm. your belief system. Yeah. Again, yeah. You yeah. know your faith and what he says, or are you going to listen to? Or are you going to look at that barrier and call it impossible? You know, mm -hmm. and then he looks at the love. The love. Uh, are you going to love him in this? Huh? Now, because um, the thing that causes some people to leave God is they yeah. God for their situation, so they run away yeah. from even looking into him as the hope for it. They just turn around and run the other way. Say he, mm. so they, they, they're done. So the love of God in that person wasn't very, very much. Yeah. And then um, trust. And he said the third thing was trust. And it says you're going to either trust God or you're going to lose heart. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You're going to, you're going to, yeah. Utterly, um, there's going to be something disturbing going on inside of you, and it's what's coming. What's going to come out is the pure you in the situation. It's one yes. way or the other, it's, you're going to have wrestle with it. And then um, he said kindness, 
And uh, it's our reaction. It's a response. What is our response oh. as we see this barrier and is in- hindering what we want? What we need. That's good. So is it the action of our response is important as well. God is looking for that. Yes, that's good. So, yeah, we are in this. Um, God is looking and he's watching how we're handling it. And and so, um, and I, I, I found that out when I was in great pain. The, yes. the the faith in me came out. The the reaction in me came out. Yes. So uh, if I I want to find where I put this, I know I put it somewhere. It, it's actually it's Compassion Ministries. Ron Mail is his name. But there's a there's a I have a title to that message and a number, and that's what you have to have in order to get that streaming. Okay. Let's see. So anyway, I'll I'll get it to you. Okay, I appreciate yeah. that. It's, it would be very enriching, and he, he just brought so many good things out in that. That I love it, and even what you shared so far is good. I'm gleaning from that. Yeah. So I'm flat footed. <laughs> Hallelujah! I'm grounded in the love. I, he just keeps talking to me about his love. So yeah, I'm assured. I'm assured. I'm. I I have no. Like, I haven't even thought of not going yet. You know, that's like so far, like, uh, I just, you know, need to know about my children's safety. So I'm like, I know I'm going. I know it's planned. Yes. And, um, and um, all I can do is pack my bags and get ready to go. And I believe the door's yeah. going to open. She's going to show. I'm not going to stumble. I'm not going to falter. I'm not going to stop getting ready. So um, I'm not going to stop. You know, it's so, his love is so great. You know, I appreciate the teaching. It's just been, it's like, it's sitting right over my head um, that you brought out with um, Stung of Solomon. Solomon. So, yes. Stung of Solomon. So, I think um, it's the Lord's timing because yes. I feel so embraced by God that there's nothing, it's true, that perfect love casts about the air. And I don't have any fear because I'm, I'm convinced that He loves me. I, I feel His love, I, I feel His presence. Um, it's been with me. That that scripture that you brought out was uh, um, you, when you were teaching. I he, he was dressing me. He was clothing me. He was he was putting something on me, sister. Yes, you know? yes. hallelujah. The garment of love. Yeah, hallelujah. I it just it's just been there. It's right there. It's just when I was squeezed with the news, it came out. We were singing signs of God's love. To him, to each other. That's all. Yeah. That's all that came out, and um, yeah, it's short stung a little bit. But, hey, it's part for the course. That's that's the way of this mm-hmm. world. Mm-hmm. You know, there's thistles and thorns. <laughs> yes, yeah. 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 Oh, we're in a jungle down here. Yeah, but it's better <laughs> over me. It's love. Oh, Amen. We, he's he's cutting cutting away the jungle. Yeah, I um, found. So, I did find the uh, title: "Learning God's Ways." Learning God's Ways. Yeah, just and, uh, uh, yes. me, and I, I want the notes that you have, <laughs> what you just read to us. Okay, I was. I don't even know why I wasn't writing, but I didn't write, so I, I want to. If you can message me, sure. Those details. I can do that. I mean, I found some more notes to it, and it says uh, there's a humbling. Yeah, and uh, he gave me. He, there was four four different things here. It leads where we need to go. That's why he, he he puts barriers or allows barriers to come, because he's trying to take he's trying to lead us a certain way. Yeah, uh, God is committed to testing my heart. Yeah, that was that was an, that was a new one for me to hear. Yeah, yeah he's committed. You know how we commit things. He's committed that he's going to test your heart. Yeah. And he's ready to go to Guatemala. <laughs> so he's depositing something there in your heart with a barrier. Yeah. And it humbles us and relies on him. That's what he wants. Yeah. God wants us to trust in him, to rely oh, on him. Lord. Look to him for the answer. Yeah, this is true. Come to him for the answer. He uses us for his glory. And then when we when when he does those things, when we are exercised in that, then we praise him for all he's done because we know it was us. You can truly you can truly say when you open your mouth that God did this. Yeah. It's a truth. It's not a thing that you're just giving God credit. That's good. the understanding. Now you have it. You can say it in a truth factor. Yeah. I'm experienced it and this is what he did. Thank you. And, uh, and, but, uh, you know, those, those, those different areas there was quite a thing that he brought out. 
And uh, I will send all this information to you. Thank sister. you. I love you, Sister Zeno. Sister Zeno, Sister. <laughs> when we were praying, I was um, getting that the Lord is working on. Okay. And it's not a confusion, but also the enemy is as well. So it's a tussle that he's going through. Oh, he remembers, but it was the enemy that came in to come at you mm-hmm. with it for shakenness. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. we will be calling you today apologetic. Yeah. Um, I just want to encourage you. And you, and that was great. I, I love it, the state of mind that you're in. Just sit and wait. It's a wait. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. a wait. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So slick, okay? But, but we win. That's yeah, right. So that's what I'm saying. Rest assured. But the best thing about this is that he's working on him. He's working yeah. on him. Yes. And I know you know that and you've seen that, but that's what I got. So I'm in, I'm just sitting back and the miracle, oh my God. <laughs> it's gonna manifest. It's a miracle. Thank you, Jesus. That's right. Okay. <laughs> With him. And it's coming. I will see. It's coming. How do we get the miracle? Yeah, it's need, faith, and obedience. Thank you for giving me that opportunity. Yeah, Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you. You know that song, "You Raise Me Up." Whoever I I don't remember who put the song on there, but I'll tell you what, I took that song with me and I played it over and over. I went to all kinds of uh, people that were singing that song, and I was listening to all that because. Wow. I felt that, uh, you know, he, he raises me up to walk on mountains and to walk on stormy seas. Just think about what he, what is that word is saying, mm. that we walk on mountains, spiritual mountains, and we walk on uh, stormy seas in the spiritual. He, yeah. We're not sinking like, like the apostle did, yeah. but we're walking. He's making it so that we can walk on the water. Yeah. It was stormy. Look at yeah. It, just watch the storm of, on a sea, and it's it's not an easy walk. Right. Yeah. He he is with us, and he lets us rise up. Yeah. And walk in places that most people could never walk. Ah, that's good. And so good. it's just an awesome. It was an awesome fitting. It was a good fitting song, and I'm really, really, I really felt like the Lord wanted me to use that song in our, our my summit. Okay. And I gotta I gotta get a hold of brother. Anyway, um, I want to go back to, um, and I'm trying to see my time here. Yes, yeah. we got your time. Okay, I want to go back, and, and and you, Sister Wilkes, were quoting this morning that, that song to Solomon. Clear up into the one very verse that I was going to start off with this morning. Yeah. My beloved spake and, pay, and said unto me, rise up, yeah. my love, yeah. my fair one. Come away. Why? And you said it just like I, I'm saying it. It sounds to me just like what we do in morning prayer. Yes. <laughs> we ah. rise up, don't we? Yes. God said, come on. Wake up. Come on. I love it. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I want you to come. And he, he, he's, he's in anticipation, like I said yesterday. We, we are in expectation. And he's in the same mode. And it, it says, uh, the voice of my beloved, behold, he cometh leaping upon the mountains and skipping upon the hills. You know, uh, you see uh, with a, a two lovebirds in, in uh, maybe a, you know, uh-oh, to each other's arms. And this is the way that I saw this. Running, can't wait till the moment that we meet together and we actually embrace, and that's what we do. We are looking for that embrace, aren't we? Yeah. When God, we are. when we come together with Him. Yeah. And uh, in spirit and in truth, He said, "That's what He wants us to be in spirit and in truth." So know that when you get to that that very prime moment of spirit and truth, that's the embrace of God. That seems to be the very moment that we feel His presence. And you know, prayer after that is so easy. We are we are just in a m- different mode than when we rose up to pray. Yeah, and that's what we're looking for. We're, we're looking for that embrace of the Lord. And I found it. Uh, I wrote down. There's a metaphor. Um, I'm trying to see why I brought the metaphor in there. Well, I can't figure it out right now. But I don't want to go to trying to find it. But it says I said on here a metaphor is for caresses and embraces. And this is what this this uh, song of Solomon is is such a description 
of these metaphors. You're like the, you're like the roe or you're like the, the hind. It's about the uh, the beauty of he sees your beauty. He's he's hiding behind the lattice, can he, yeah. wanting to catch a glimpse of us in our life. You know, this is this is uh, this is when he's you know having these these caresses or these embraces on us. He's yeah. It's all about that. It's all about getting together with him and him uh, and you. It's it's a it's a two thing. You know, it's him and you, and uh, he. Uh, and he is a jealous God. That's why he doesn't want to share us with anybody. He wants your whole focus on him. And that's that's what love is. Yeah. When you really love somebody, you can't focus on anything but that one person. That's all you want to think about. And that's how he he wants us to be. He wants us to be in that, that kind of a mode all the time. And I'm going to go into the 11th verse. For lo, the winter is past and the rain is over and gone. And uh, in the parentheses, I put, it's the time of love. In, you know, uh, when all the storms are gone and over with, now uh, there's spring that comes forth. And, and uh, there's a sparkling in the newness. It's like the earth has been, uh, the rain has, has taken away all the crustiness and all the yucky stuff. And now spring has got these beautiful little flowers that are popping up out of the ground. Uh, to decorate the earth and it's as if beauty now is stepping in the horrid of winter is over and the beauty of spring is coming and uh, there's something beautiful about that and that's where love begins to blossom and it says for lo the winter is past so he's talking about uh, he's talking about this love for us you know, you've gone through some stuff and in it, he showed himself strong for you. Now there's this pure love coming forth. It's that flower of faith coming up in us. And in that song, you raised me up. It was such a, I just felt the Lord in such a beautiful, I just felt him being this, you know, uh, strong entity of uh, the what I needed when things were going so bad. And he was, he showed up. He was my rescuer. He was the one who brought deliverance yes. to me. He solved yes. the problem. Yes. And that's what coming out of that winter, that 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 turbulence that we that we found in him was the very thing that rescued like we our flowers start to come up. The Lord sees that that beauty after the, the storm. It says the flowers appear on the earth. And the time of this, look at that. I didn't even know it was in that verse there, but so the flowers appear on the earth and the time of the singing of birds is come and the voice of the turtle is heard in our land. And I didn't even know that there was a voice from a turtle. Yeah. So it makes me want to look that up what kind of voice it be. But uh, look at look at what he's looking at in that here and he he's watching us and he's seeing that that most beautiful moment in, that we are and that is that pure trust in him and faith in him now is is so nurtured and we're enriched because of his his entrance into our winter problem yeah the fig tree put forth her green figs oh. and the vines with the tender grape give a good smell arise my love my fair one and come away. Mm -hmm. He he sees he sees all this. This is this is a prime time when the fruit on the tree or the on the vine is tasty. It's the most desirable moment of the of the of this grape or this fig. It becomes is is one of those you know if you was to look at a chef and he tastes something and he goes mm, you know he gives that little sound and this is this is the kind of sound that the lord is doing he sees us and and he sees the results of you know us coming from winter into the spring now and and uh, he's just he can't wait because that moment we are we are just at that moment in which everything is so delicious in us i want to use the term delicious and he's you know this is his goal to see this happen to blossom from us yeah uh, oh, my dove, thou art in the clefts of the rock and the secret place of the stars. Let me see thy countenance is comely. 
it says to fly away or uh, oh to fly away and be alone with him so he, he likes that uh, that moment in which you're so focused focused on you and now uh and when we spend alone with him that's prayer you know, basically the closet of prayer I mean, we meet together as a as prayer warriors, and, and this is another this is another form of prayer. But to be alone with Him in our secret closet, you know, in the place where it's just Him and I, and there's no one around us, and I'm and I'm praying and talking to Him. Now that's that is uh, part of, of our prayer life. Don't don't leave that part out. Yeah, because He loves. That. You see. I, I asked for a prayer for the prayer warriors, but I was alone in the pain. Uh, there was no frivolous. I was totally keyed into him, knowing that he was my he was my hope. Yes, because at the time, you know, I don't know if you ever had the same problem that I had. But to be weak in your back mm. is like you are totally put down, and I couldn't function. Mm. There wasn't anything to concentrate on in the middle of that pain. It was so severe. And, uh, and and my focus was on him. Now, if I hadn't if I hadn't had a relationship with him, where would I have gone with that? I'd have been at the doctor's office probably, looking for somebody to do something for me. And not that I I don't put doctors down. I I've been to the thing and I know what I I know what I have and I know why it was happening to me. So why do I want to go see a doctor? It's going to do the same. Thing that he did last time, he's going to he's going to get some kind of a shot in my back. What he's going to do, and even after a while, when that those kind of shots, if you keep using those things, they they don't work anymore. So why do I want to go to second best when I know the first, the best, the best physician? He is our physician. That's what the scripture says. And uh, and so I went, I went to the one he was, and he met with me in that where he took the pain. And did it totally make it go away? No, not not at first. I had to suffer mm-hmm. a few times, mm-hmm. but but now I'm uh, I haven't I don't I still have the uh, tenderness in my back, but I but I'm very careful not to aggravate it. But the Lord is helping me to come out through this, and that's what the Lord wants. He's He should be the one that we run to. He's our refuge, and so this is what He's after. He's after that alone time with us. And sometimes he has to make it. He, maybe my alone time wasn't being sufficient enough. I don't know. But he wanted some more private time with me. And he didn't want nothing to interfere with that. So he put some pain there to get my focus on him more than anything. And now I have a testimony that he met with me to that. He, he was there. And uh, I know it wasn't just my prayer alone. But it, it was the prayer warriors helping me. During that time, I was really having a tough time, but I did it long for that. Fifteen, it says, "Take us the foxes that spoil the vine, for our vines have tender grapes." And it's and I put under your relationship that allows no inner no um, intrusions. So see, that's what I'm basically saying here. The Lord wanted my want me. Or anyone there, this this fox, you know, this is trying to intrude. My pain was trying to intrude, uh, but it didn't work because because I've been exercised and and I knew where I needed to go with it, and God met me there. Intrusion, the one who really is the most, most important in whatever intrusion that we might be experiencing, and so uh, you know. Sister, Sister Book, you got an intrusion. I don't know what's going on, but there's some interference going on right now. Uh-huh. Get out of here, Fox. <laughs> the Lord is good. Yeah. My my beloved is mine. I'm his. And he feedeth among lilies. You see, God never leaves us alone in anything that we're going through. He's always there. And, and, it, and here it talks about the lilies. You know, he's a lilies. He's the lily of the valleys. I mean, he's gonna bring. He's gonna bring some beauty in the midst of our problem. Yeah, he, he is, is the beauty, and he but he, bring, he brings it so that we can see there's something special, even in the middle of some 
uh, valley experience, there's always beauty in it. If we will look for it, we will find him in it. And he is, he is the, he is the very ingredient that makes whatever we're going through okay. Yeah, yeah. I will do this from my God. If he's bringing this to me, I'm going to go through it. And I'm going to go through it because he's there with me. And he's in charge. I'm not in charge. Yeah. And that's what's so beautiful about this. Because you see, uh, and I even, you know, the, the Lord allows me to venture off in things. But, you know, I'm thinking about the guys, the men, like Brother Wilkes yeah, and Brother yeah. Crump. And Brother Delgado and Brother Graves, they're men. Yeah. And they read about this, how uh, he, the Lord, they're going to be married to God. And sometimes I wonder, because they're on the male side of things, you know, they are the provider. We are, they are the deliverer of their family, the protector yes. of their family. Yeah. And they're all these things. And that's what God is. And they have to, they have to kind of back up from that position because that's what they are they're in a position that god set forth for them to be in yes and they have to become in a sense they have to become the the uh, bride and i I, yes. I i wouldn't mind hearing sometime from brother wilk maybe or brother crump how they think on this because it's like they got to regress into uh become the weaker vessel basically kind of thing yeah. and it must be a little tough on them but uh but we are the bride of Christ, and we have to understand our position. Yeah. And he is the one leading the way. We, we have his hand, and he's just, we're, just, we're just going along with him because he's, he's breaking down the, you know, the jungle. He's tearing down the, he's making a pathway for us. And he's taken, he's taken the, uh, the brunt, if you want to call it that, although, I, you know, he's, he, he he's in, he can speak it. He can say, "Get out of my way," and it's gone. But I I think I see it a little bit different. I see him. I see him working on breaking something down that's going on, and he doesn't want his bride to have to to deal with it. And the bride, if she's not careful, will get in front of get in front of him. Yeah, and that's where they get hurt. That's where they they, they struggle with. Uh, they're trying to fix it themselves, and and it and it causes pain and suffering. Uh, if they would just learn how to get behind and follow and hold his hand. And that's what the Lord wants us to, he wants us to know that he, uh, we belong to him and he, and he, and he's there to, to help me in my, whatever it is I'm going through. He's the, he's the, the uh, knight in shining armor for me and for you. Until the day break and the shadows flee away. Turn, my beloved, and be thou like a roe uh, uh, or a young heart upon the mountains of Bether. Bether. And, uh, you know, and there's, I kind of read a little bit about what this um, roe was and what made him so different, this, this roe, different from the ones here that's on, the, on our side of the world. Uh, so the, these are mountain uh, animals it calls it a young heart a row so he has lots of energy and lots of you know he's able to um, to run through the mountains because he's he's got this energy that's built in him and uh, from what i understand it's a it's a very fine animal and uh, beautiful animal and so the lord's he's his description of us is in this uh in in this animal and uh he sees the he sees that prime moment in which we have uh, we are young and, and able to accomplish and conquer, you know, the energy that's within us. And um, he sees us in our prime. Yeah. And um, he's telling us he wants us to be like that. He wants us to be, uh, don't think of ourselves as uh, defeated, but he wants us to know that uh, he's given us the energy or the, the strings or whatever it takes to be able to accomplish whatever mountain you might be yeah. running on this upon the mountains of Bethar. He wants us to know that he's he's the one that is supplying all this for us. Yeah. And he delights in us running in what he has given us. He he delights in that. Don't you know he delights in the faith he's put in us? He's he's nurtured it and now he watches it. And he watches you and he watches me and he watches us in, in all these obstacles that 
we may meet up with, you know, the mountain and, and how gracefully we can go up that mountain because of what he's in, he's put inside of us. And it delights in him to see our functioning and how we, how our faith rises up within us. And uh, this phase that I was reading out of the, out of that uh, message that I was getting from uh, Ron Mills mm-hmm. and he, he gave such descriptions uh, mm-hmm. And it was, it was awesome, you know, faith and love and trust and kindness. And he delights in watching us rise up, uh, climbing that mountain of, of uh, you know, uh, to get over to the other side or get to the top and get ready to do this summit. And this is what this is all about. It's, it's about being, uh, I, see, I see what he's planted in us and how he, he sits back and he watches as we, as we climb. And he sees our difficulties, yet he put inside of us the ingredient that's going to make us reach it, reach it to the top. Yeah. And when we get up there, he knows that we're going to be, we're going to look around and we're going to see the beauty of it all. Because we're on the top of that mountain and we just climbed up that mountain. It was a rough trip up, but we made it because he equipped us to do that. So, you know, I, I, it just makes me look at things so differently in, in my life, you know, obstacles that come my way. They, they are so needed, every one of us. Yeah, we don't, we don't particularly like it sometimes because we are, you know, we, we feel it. We experience mm-hmm. uh, it's, it's, a, it's a turbulence that is, that is hard to deal with sometimes. Uh, but we, but he's equipped us, and every everything we go through is equipping you more and more all the time. I mean, I dig into the scriptures, and I there are some scriptures that become more profound to me because they've given me an insight, and that's God building inside of me some things, and it's staying with me. Every you know, Psalms one hundred seven was one of those psalms. Mm. I mean, it gave me an insight of the struggle especially in this COVID time when people are just coming down sick with things and how it makes them feel and how, how the, you know, the, the kind of thing that they're faced with. So many have been faced with this thing and they've died in it. And I think about that. I think about that struggle for that person. Yeah. They didn't have the equipment you and I have. Oh, think about that. Yeah. Now God sees us and he sees this. He sees what he's done in us. And he's saying, he's telling us, you know, my beloved, mine, and I am his. And he feeds us among the ladies. He's done this for us. And he's, and he's built in us this thing. And it's a beauty. Yeah, we, we may look in the mirror and see no beauty. But God, when he does these things, when he's, when he's making us, we're becoming more and more and more, more like the young row. And he sees that beauty coming out in us. And don't you know it thrills him because the scripture says that, that we don't please him any other way but, but by faith. And that's the beauty that he sees is our faith. That's, that's us reacting to this God yeah. who created us and loves us. And he gave us his word. He gave up. Look at how big that word is. And we can explore in that word and find the, the very thing that we need to help us to, to go through things. He gives us stepping stones that, that are solid, you know, and we are, what do we do? We're supposed to make sure that we're, we plan our, our life on, on the rock. Mm-hmm. That's our part. It's really an easy part. It's just called a choice and being, uh, and making sure that no one comes and, and gets us to go build this thing on the sand. So this is, this is our, our part, but God's part is to make, you know, is to help us in our, all that he's the one that will keep us on that rock if we turn to him if we make sure that we are our focus is on this one who loves us mm-hmm. then, then he, he will keep us there and how he you know peace the peace of god shall what keep your heart and mind through christ jesus oh. why where did we get this peace we got it when we was in prayer yes it was bringing to him the need saying, I can't do this, Lord. I give it to you. That's what we're basically saying. When we come and bring our request before him, make it known unto him. He already knows it, but he likes it when you come and make it known unto him. He, he wants you to give it to him because then when we give it, then 
We know when something changed in it, it was him that did it. He becomes the knight in shining armor to us. And that's why peace can come and keep our hearts and minds because we we give him everything. The people in this world, they don't have no place to give it except to him. And they don't want to do that for some reason. So whatever their decision was in their heart, they didn't want to give it to him. They wanted to give it to something else that was insufficient. And look at these next uh, verses from here. I think I was at the end of that one chapter there. And you go into the other verses, and there's a lot of descriptions going on there. He talks about, you know, he's, he's looking at all all of us. He's looking at he's looking at us, and he sees the beauty, and he's he's bringing descriptions. He talks about uh, thou hast doves' eyes, and I am thinking he's really describing here. You know, he's in he's very uh, he he he's very detailed. And um, you know, when you read, I and I and I invite you to read those descriptions because uh, he's comparing it. He's comparing us to things, yeah. and uh, it, it's it's uh, you know you you see uh, if your spouse or you know if you fell in love with and this love was re, you know back and forth, and the guy he goes, I love your eyes are so beautiful. So what happens is 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 they they are in love with you, and then they begin to love every part of you. And this is what God is doing. He is in so detail because he's loving every inch of us. And so he brings descriptions, and he brings them out. And and uh, when somebody loves like that, mm. now that's real love. Yeah. When they when they see every little part, you know, they see. They see the twinkle in your eye. They see the laugh. They see the the way you turn your head. They it's it's all about everything about you is loved. Now that's that's God who loves us. Mm. And that's what God is telling us in the in the Song of Solomon. Mm. And I, I really would like to study a whole lot more in the Song of Solomon. Yeah. Because it's going to tell me about him and his love for me and his love for you, mm-hmm. and I'm going to I'm going to get a better understanding of that. Because sometimes when we're in a trial, we think God does not love us. Yeah. Why are you making me suffer, Lord? That's how we think. Those are thoughts that come through. Yeah. Why Why did you? And then sometimes we even feel like, well, maybe I'm not right with the Lord, and and now I'm, you know, He just thrown me aside and. And he's going to allow me to be destroyed. These are thoughts that come our way and everything that we face. And so what happens is we make, we're make we making some choices in those, in those moments. Mm-hmm. And we're either going to choose to hear that voice that tries to pull out uh, our trust in our God, or we're going to trust our God. And we're going to go to a verse. We're going to stand on something out of the Word of God, because that's where our faith goes. And, and uh, I, would, I want to know more about his love for me. See, the more you put in, the more that will come out during the times of, of barriers and, and these little foxes that want to come in and cause trouble. Mm-hmm. You're going to be able to turn more quickly from all that to him. And that's what he wants. He just wants you to be so focused that, that's that's who you cry out to him. He's the one, not the phone, and call somebody else. Oh, it was me. I'm going through this. I don't know how to handle it. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just you can share with somebody, and they can pray with you, and that's a good thing. And I did that when I was in such pain, but I know who was the one that was going to take care of it, and that was him. That's right. Yeah. And I was crying out at that moment because the extreme pain. I was crying out to him because he was the only one that was going to work. Right, and my the prayer warriors were helping me because I, I I shared the fact that I was in need, and the Lord's teaching me that stuff because I used to be just so by myself. I don't want no one knowing I'm going through anything. Right, right, right. <laughs> because that means yep. I'm weak. Yep. But, wow. but God God doesn't intend for us to stand alone in things. That's he good. he he wants to stay connected to the body. Yet we are focused on the head. Oh, Thank you, Jesus. So that this is how the how it kind of works, and I'm learning at my old age. I wish I'd known more and more, more of this when I was younger. But um, I've 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 learned a lot uh, through the ages of my ages, and a lot of a lot of 
mountains I've climbed and a lot of valleys I've walked through. Yes. And um, I know I know where my help comes from. And that's that's the thing that he's after. He's, he's after that ingredient that he's placed in us. He's, he, you see, and the Lord let me see this too. He said, when I see you, I don't see you in your imperfections that you're in now, although I'm helping you yeah. in those. He said, but I, what I'm really seeing in is the end results. I'm seeing you as this roe. I'm seeing you as this hind. I see you in the That's fullness that. of your vine mm-hmm. and the fig tree. I'm seeing you this way. Even yeah. though you haven't quite got there yet, I still see you that way. I see you in your beauty. Yeah. Amen. God is so equipping. I'm so thankful. Thank you. I don't have to be the head where I need to be. I just need to follow. Let him take care of the situation. Yes. And take care of the things that I cannot. Mm-hmm. I, came, I, came to, uh, I came to that moment. I'd taken my granddaughter. She wanted to go to Walmart and get something. And I said, go in. You can go in. I usually go in with her foot. I said, I cannot go right now. And I said, in the car and I cried. I said, Lord, I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't do this, Lord. I kept saying it over and over to him. I can't I can't go through this pain and take care of myself. And I was at that point, and I knew it. I knew that God and I were having this one on one, and it was pure. There was nothing flowery about what I was saying to him. I came to the end, and that's 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 beautiful to the Lord. And it was such a relief to me because I let out what was really needed. I needed to say, I can't do it. That made me stand back and just say, okay, Lord, if anything on with me, it's going to be you that does it. It's you. You're going to be the one to set it up for me because I can't. I'm in a very vulnerable moment. There is nothing in me that can do anything. It's going to take you, and that's where the Lord wanted me to be. He wanted me to be at that moment because now he can step ahead and I know what he's doing it. And that's the beauty of living for God, is to be so humbled in the, in your state of whatever it is you're going through, that you give him the go-ahead. And you just sit there and watch. What are you going to do, Lord? It's, going to, you're, you're, it's your move. <laughs> and Sister Wilkes, I give this back to you. Sister Zeno. Yes. Um, you know, I know, um, aside from the back pain, you've been dealing with your uh, with your knees. And I know your stance is you want the Lord to heal you. Yeah. And uh, you don't want knee replacements. And I'm going to stand and believe with you. Hallelujah. We're going to, I want to start uh, focusing on your knees and in prayer and asking the Lord for that. Because that's going to be a supernatural miracle. Well, he's going to have to heal my back. Because the back is what really shoots the pain down through my knees. And it could be the very reason my knees are having such a problem. Is there's a weakness in my back. Okay. Well, let's, the Lord will show us exactly the root of the issue. And we're going to get to that in prayer. So, ladies, I'm asking that um, Sister uh, Zeno feels the pain in her back. And um, whether or not that's the, the epicenter of it, we know that there's pain uh, in her body. And uh, um, it's trying to slow her down. But so the richness in it, Sister Zeno, is this. You are such an example of the believer. And we get to watch you. And, and I, I don't know if everyone else is, but I'm learning. And I'm looking at you. Everything that you go through, I'm looking at your responses. I'm looking at your surrender to the Lord. And, and you're even in your suffering, you're, you're teaching. And I thank you for your transparency. I thank you for your honesty. I thank you for the yes. simplicity that you have. So, you, um, I, I uh, again, I thank the Lord for you. 
as uh, as my elder and my teacher. Hallelujah. I thank the Lord for the reconnection. Hallelujah. And so we're going to walk with you. We're going to pray. I want us to, ladies, make that a matter of prayer continually. In the name of Jesus, that we will continue to pray for her. Hallelujah. Not We're going to do do it not only on the prayer line, but let's do it in our personal prayer time. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. And sister, let's just say something. I see your hand up. Yes. Sister Zeno, yes. when you were, <clears throat> I was picturing you sitting in your car and I was picturing you crying out to God and, and just saying, I can't do it. You know, I just can't do it. But, yeah. And when I saw you in that state, mm -hmm. I saw you in the purest form connected to his love. Yes. Because right. if you read in Psalm 51, which I'm I'm always telling everyone, Psalm 51, Psalm 51, it says it all. If you read in Psalm 51, it says that he loves that broken and contrite yes. heart. It's like a, it's like a sweet, most sweetest aroma to him. Amen. Is to be broken. Yes. Is to be broken. Is to be hurting. And when you were crying out to him, I could see him just wrapping his loving arms, his yes. wings around yes. you. And pulling you in and pulling you in closer to him. And I have a testimony about the Song of Solomon. I read it at one point and I was like, I don't understand this. This is a little bit too. Really, seriously, I said, this is a little bit too explicit for me. Really. So when I went through the Bible last year and I got to the book of Solomon, I said, just whisper a prayer. I said, God, please help me understand this. I know you want me to read this book. Please help me understand this. And when I did, and I just testified about this yesterday with someone on the phone. And when I did, I realized through the Song of Solomon that that was a love letter from God to his people. Yes, to yes. us and it was personal right. it is yeah. personal he shows how much yeah. he loves us and i got jealous when you read that part looking through the last yes. i got jealous i said she's reading my love <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's a normal, normal response my love uh, exactly yes i'm like i know he looks through the windows. I know he looks through the lattice because he wants me. He yeah. loves me. He loves yeah, me yeah, so yeah. much. And yeah. I got real jealous. And I told her, <laughs> I said, she needs to stop reading that. That's my love letter. <laughs> so I love it. So sister, you said you were going to read that sister. And I'm going to tell you something. Ooh, I'm going to pray. I said, the, I whispered the prayer when you said you were going to read that through to get better understanding. Ooh, I said, Lord, if you could do it for me, I know you could do it for my sister Zeno. And she needs that right now because it's that love that we understand about him is where that healing comes. Yeah. The pain go away because he had to endure pain when he was carrying the cross. And it yeah. didn't happen in private. It happened in public. They all saw when he fell. They all saw when he fell carrying the cross. So if he wants me to have pain, I, I endure the pain. I say, okay, Lord, and believe me, sister. Oh, if you just knew what I've been going through. But I give it to him and I cry. I cry just, just the way you cried in that car. I cry when I'm sitting in the restroom and I'm just getting sick. And that was on a daily basis. I don't know why I have a little reprieve. I guess he's giving me a reprieve. But there was a couple of days where I haven't done anything, but I thank God that that nausea Praise has gone away Lord, for a yes. little while. And if it comes back, I'll thank him for it. I'll still thank him for it because the enemy doesn't like it when you thank God during the Amen. Pain. That's true. When you start worshiping God, I was doing that. Like Hallelujah. Yeah. So, sister, you know we love you, and you know, oh my gosh, you know that you are just his. Your job is just not done yet. <laughs> it's just not done. And and his grace is sufficient for you. You yes. know that, sister. I love you with all my heart. I love you from the bowels of compassion. And and God loves you. And he soon, sister, soon you will be with him. Soon. It's almost, it's almost over. Yes. But carry on, sister. Carry on. Just yes. carry on because you have all of us helping you. Hold your hand.
so through this battle. Mm. That's what's so well, good about Sister Zeno. Sister Zeno. Yeah. Um, before you hang up, don't forget the prayer request from Sister and um, and uh, my prayer. I'll just say it, say this publicly. My prayer and my desire for you is that God satisfies you with long life. Yeah. And that's what I pray for. That's what I hope for. That's what I believe. I just want to put that out there in the invisible yeah. and in the ears of your people that that God and God is my witness. Yes. My only prayer and desire for you is long life. I I <laughs> my heart cannot even uh, wrap my mind around anything other than that. So Sister Zeno, that's my prayer for you. That's the hope I have for you. The hope in Jesus that he'll satisfy you with long life. And I, I pray, you know, the Lord gets just as much glory from your suffering as he does from the miracle of healing. So I'm going to lean on the side of the supernatural healing. Yes. Because I'm watching you suffer. But if he desires to let you suffer all the way through, okay, it's his will. But I do know that he has a will for healing too. So I'm going to stand on the on the healing side and the long life side. How about that? I love you. Okay. <laughs> I, agree. I, agree. I agree with the, with you and everything that we do. Um, you are my, uh, you're my teacher. You're my example. You are... You're my paw. Uh, well. you're, you're, you're my paw. And uh, I, I don't want you going anywhere. You know, that, and it's selfish. I know it completely is, but I want the will of God for your life. Yeah. Hallelujah. Me too. So with that, let's pray for this um, tough yeah. time. So ladies, if we could pray for her. She's a new, very new, new baby. She's a new baby. And uh, we need to undergird her and surround her yeah. with prayer. And uh, the Lord has a plan for her life. He's going to heal her land and uh, save and deliver her and restore. Yeah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for Ariella. Yes, Lord. Sister Ariella. Oh, I pray, oh God, a head of the of God. I think the blood of Jesus over her mind and the God, believe God. Yes, Lord. I come to you the spirit Thank you. In the name of Jesus, I pray for your will, O oh God, to be done.
Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Give you the honor for her life, oh God. We thank you, oh God. Thank you for bringing her in, oh God. Oh God. Give her in the name of Jesus. And all those Name of Jesus. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray over every lady. I pray, oh God, that you would cover them in a special way. Give them what they need today. Surround them with your love, with your power, and your authority, God. I pray that they will be full of courage today as they face whatever comes their way, oh God. We know you're full of everything, God. So I pray a special blessing on each one of them. God, there's several people traveling to Guatemala today. I pray that you would cover them and give them traveling mercy and grace, God. In the name of Jesus, that all will be well with them, God. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We love you. Worship and adore you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Ladies, have a beautiful day.